Hi, everyone. And uh, I'd like to introduce you to uh, Vince Ferretti, uh, who is a uh, candidate for State Assembly yep. in District 10. Yep. And District 10, as I understand it, includes part of Ocean and Monmouth counties. Correct. Uh, and uh, you're a Republican candidate yes. for State Assembly. And uh, I wanted to welcome you uh, on, on board the uh, Princeton TV Megathon. Thank you for coming. Well, thanks for having me here. Uh, we really appreciate the opportunity to be here. You know, uh, again, I'm here not just as a District 10 candidate, but also as a representative of the Lonigan campaign. You know, we appreciate the opportunity to get our message out and to have a chance to get our points in front of your viewers. Sure, sure. Tell us a little bit about uh, about what the uh, Lonigan campaign is and uh, and uh, why it's uh, important to uh, try to get the word out about the Lonigan campaign. Sure. And uh, Steve's a Republican and he's a conservative, and a lot of people like using those labels, but. I really think Steve's message goes beyond those labels and really goes out to the people. The state of New Jersey right now is in a lot of trouble. Our state is growing way faster than it can support. Uh, it's growing you know, three times the rate of inflation. In the meantime, over the past 10 years, we've lost approximately 500,000 people, mostly upper and middle class wage earners. Along with that, we're losing businesses, and businesses don't want to move into the state of New Jersey. Right. So, What's happening is the state's growing, it's needing more revenue. Meanwhile, the base that's able to pay that revenue is going down. Right. So all the state keeps doing is raising the taxes, and they raise hidden things that aren't called taxes, called fees. A lot of fees, your motor vehicle fees go up, there's fees under COA that have gone up, and they're just punishing business and people in the state to the point where it's just driving businesses and people right. out of the state at this point. So I read Steve some, wants to try to change that. Right, okay. I read somewhere that uh, uh, in New Jersey, in the past 10 years, out of, uh, I believe, out of the 10, 10 new jobs created, uh, eight or nine of them were, were state jobs. Is that well, correct? Well, the only growth in the state, it, as far as jobs, is government, government jobs. jobs. There is no growth in the private sector. Right, right. Yeah, and, so, and I mean, over the, over the past years. And that's got to be bad for New Jersey in, in terms of trying to grow, as you, as you mentioned, the tax base. To, uh, to help move New Jersey forward. Oh, sure. And the, the bad part is we were already heading down this road before the current crisis with the recession and everything going on. Right. So we were already in trouble. The recession just made it that much worse you know, for, for everybody here. And the, even the stimulus money coming from the federal government isn't going to fix the problem. I mean, until we get the government under control, we get spending under control, nothing's going to change in the state for the people. Well. Uh, the it, it's, it's likely that the stimulus money is probably going to go, obviously, to helping run local government. Is that correct? Or, and this local and state government. How is that money going to funnel down to uh, businesses and individuals in, in the state of New Jersey, apart from fixing the roads, for example? Right. And all the initial money really is towards infrastructure projects, uh, right. roads, the, the tunnel into New York, which is a, doesn't help helps New York, then it helps more than it helps New Jersey, even though New Jersey is paying a large part of the bill. And... So those are going to be one-shot items that are going to help. But if, you, if you're improving the roads but you're not attracting business into the state, it doesn't matter. Having a better infrastructure right. while you've got what's considered the worst business atmosphere in the entire country is not going to attract businesses into New Jersey to help fill that gap. Well, why do you think taxes keep rising year over year in New Jersey? Well, I mean, again, we kind of touched on that. Yeah, I mean, taxes have to rise. As, uh, um, if you want to cut taxes, you've got to cut your need for money at the state level. As long as they keep growing the state, more higher paying jobs, right. more departments, more programs such as COA, the Abbott School District, these kind of things, you've got to get the money from somewhere. Well, again, the population is dropping down as far as the taxpayer base. Population is dropping down as far as the business taxpaying base. Right. You've got less people to tax, so you've got to tax people more. And again, they, they hide a lot of it in those fees and everything. And a good example is in COA. If you wanted to start a business in New Jersey today and create a bu and hire 16 people, you have to buy a house. Really? <laughs> wow. Basically, you have to pay a fee to co of approximately $116,000, depending on where you live, to help fund one affordable house. Oh, my goodness. That's incredible. Yeah. Makes you want to open a business, doesn't it? No, no. <laughs> I mean, and 16 employees is not a lot of people. No, it's not. <laughs> that's, that's, that qualifies as a small business, I would oh, say. Oh, yeah, definitely. Oh, okay. Wow. So, um... Steve Lonigan uh, um, is a is a Republican. There there is another Republican candidate running at the same time, mm -hmm. and uh, the the decision as to who will get the Republican nod is going to be uh, made at the primary, which is June second. So it's coming Correct. up yep. very quickly. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
Why is it important to uh, get behind Steve Logan versus Chris Christie, who was the, uh, the party Republican who was running? Well, there's stark differences between the two candidates. One, Steve has never been the inside machine politician. Chris Christie is supported by all of the machine politicians who have been around for a long time. And even though Chris Christie likes to talk about the fact of the impact that the last two administrations, the McGreevy and Corzine administration, have had on the state as far as taxes, as far as increased spending, as far as increased debt, yes. the Republican administrations before that were just as bad who were supported by these political machines. And a lot of the people at the Assembly and Senate level who were part of that are still there. In fact, uh, Peter Lawrence, who is Chris Christie's uh, economic advisor, right. he was actually the architect of raising the state pension funds by nine per state pensions by 9% and lowering the age. Probably the single largest impact on the pension fund and the needs of funding the pension fund in the, in the lifetime of the pension fund and for the state. he's a Republican? He's a Republican. Right, right. Well, it kind of goes to the heart of uh, the whole debate uh, surrounding the, the previous uh, national administration, the Bush administration, that kind of, to, to some, got off track a little bit when, uh, when they increased spending and, and uh, sort of weren't as fiscally responsible as one might suspect a Republican administration to be. Um, and so, uh, and so I guess the, the point of difference with Steve is that he's kind of, uh, he's kind of taking that to task and, and acknowledging that that's a problem and he wants to do something about it. Right. And not only that, he stands on his record. When he was the mayor of Bogota, he did that thing. He got the budgets cut down. He locked down the property tax increases. He kept everything under control. Chris Christie has never been in an executive position. He likes to talk as if he was, but he wasn't. I mean, mm -hmm. let's face it. It's, he, worked for somebody else. He wasn't, he wasn't the one who made the final decisions and was held responsible for the decisions being made at the top. Uh, with that, Steve has a plan, and he's articulated this from day one of yeah, running. Yeah, tell us a little bit about Steve's plan, uh, uh, about uh, sort of um, what, what his major point of difference is, I would say. Well, first of all, on the taxes, Steve is proposing a flat tax. The first year it would be 2.9 percent, the second year it would be 2.5, and then it would drop down to 2.1. Now for people making, for single people un, who make over $35,000 a year, their tax rate would go down. For married people making over $70,000 a year, their tax rate would go down. What it would really impact is the upper and middle class people who have been leaving the state because right now the high tax rate, they're talking about raising the maximum tax rate in New Jersey to over 10 percent. Right. That'll make it the highest income tax in the country. You're not going to attract people to the state. You're not going to attract business to the state. And that, that's on to top of property taxes. And, right. Uh, is that on top of corporate taxes as well? Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Exactly. And, uh, so if you're, if you're a corporation and a New Jersey taxpayer, which I am, <laughs> <laughs> you pay twice, just to let you folks know. You pay the personal taxes, and then you pay the corporate taxes. So. Well, right, and not only that. And, and the property taxes, obviously. Well, not only that, and we have some of the most restrictive legislation against businesses. It's very restrictive. A lot of fees associated with a lot of yes. things. I mean, one of the things that Steve talks about you is the negative. You have to pay a fee just to be in business. Oh, There's yeah. There's a $500 upfront fee that you've got to pay mm -hmm. just right up front. This is the CBT. All right, and if you fall foul of the, you know, uh, the DEP, you know, God help you, because yes, they, uh, are, well, they are judge, jury, and you know, executioner, basically, when it comes to, to their the issues. Department of Environmental Protection. Protection yes. Yeah. And that's one thing Steve says is out of control, and he wants to the range New Jersey. Out of New Jersey. All right. Well, they, they just, did they just collapse the ag agricultural department into that department? I mean, I know they just closed the agricultural department. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not sure. Okay. Not okay. Um, um, I just want to talk about uh, uh, Corzine a little bit in terms of like what he's done, his record. I know that the, the first thing I can remember Corzine doing is raising the sales tax by a penny. Well, but he didn't just raise the sales tax. Right. He also increased the scope of the sales tax. Uh -huh. A lot of small businesses that never had to pay sales tax before because it would have been a burden on them to do it now have to pay it. So, you know, what you had before was what people don't realize when you're paying sales tax, it isn't just the price of the sales tax, it's the cost of compliance. 
So now these very well, small yes, businesses. Of course, as a small business, right. I can attest to that because you, you have to gather the taxes and then you have to redistribute them. And so you have to, and then you have to do the follow up paperwork. Which right. Is, so which either is, you're uh, doing yes. it yourself or you're paying an accountant to do it. But either course. way, it's time and money Absolutely. just to be able to comply with these Absolutely. expanded regulations. Yeah, yeah. Again, that's where, that's where New Jersey has become very burdensome on small businesses, especially, you know, even more so than the corporations. I'm going to throw you a curveball just because sure. uh, um, I think it's maybe uh, pertinent. In terms of, uh, I understand the desire to reduce taxes, and, and we all share that desire. How would New Jersey, if it had a reduced, uh, if you reduced, how would you propose that reducing tax rates would help uh, fund uh, some of the, uh, all the social or some of the social programs that are, that you would have to agree are, are essential to? Well, first of all, again, it isn't just the revenue coming in, it's the revenue going out. The size of government has got to be made smaller. It's been growing well beyond its capability to be sustained in the state of New Jersey. Mm -hmm. If we try to go the way we're going now, we're all going to be paying 50, 60 percent of our income to the state of New Jersey right. just to support the taxes. So we've got to go out and we've got to cut the size of government. Steve wants to eliminate five departments and he wants to reduce the effect of the DEP. He's also looking at other measures within the state to cut the size of state, he wants to reduce the state by 15,000 employees, eliminate programs that we believe don't work, such as COA, you know, right. working Can through that. Can you explain what COA is to, to those? Sure. Uh, COA is the Council on Affordable Housing. It came out of the uh, Mount Laurel decisions, originally Mount Laurel 1, Mount Laurel 2. And the COA is how the legislature decided to implement it. Now, We've got a few positions on there. One, we think that the legislature went way beyond what the court had stated to begin with mm -hmm. in creating COA. And the other part is that we think COA is wrong, and hopefully by the changes that are going to happen in the Supreme Court through the next gubernatorial, through the next governor, will eliminate COA totally, be able to get rid of it. But COA finds people tremendously. Like I said, if you want to open up a business for every 16 people that you have, it's going to cost you $116,000. It mandates that towns build affordable housing. In, I live in Tom's River. Tom's River is required to build over 4,000 affordable housing units or allow them to be built. How much do we want to build out our towns? Because when you look at the COA formulas, it's a one for five. So what you're saying is, I'm going to build 4,000, but to build those 4,000, I'm going to build another 20,000. So I'm actually building 24,000 units of housing in right. Tom's River to meet the affordable housing requirements. So um, Steve Lonigan's uh, position is uh, that of a Republican, but he has a, a, a sort of a different angle on the, on the, on the tax picture and on the uh, party picture for, for New Jersey and that he's not uh, the mainstream Republican candidate. So the message really is to get, get the vote out for the primary for Steve Lonigan, which the primary is June 2nd. Uh, again, just All right, to yeah, that. and not just for Steve. I mean, Steve's got 40-plus people yeah, running across the state right. in support of him, including people you're, you're like me. You're not running for a primary, though, are you? <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah, I'm well, running for are. the primary. Oh, so yeah. your, your, your election is June the 2nd as mm -hmm. well? Oh, yeah. Okay. So we can't just, it, putting Steve in there would be good. Getting people who are going to go into the assembly and help support Steve and the initiatives that Steve wants right. is going to be even better. Right. You know, right. that's going to help Steve get his agenda, you know, through the assembly and get these initiatives in the state. Right. Okay. So just to be clear, uh, Vince Ferretti and Steve Lonigan are both Republicans, but they are uh, independent-minded Republicans in that they are running somewhat against the main party line of the Republican Party in New Jersey. Uh, and I, I, we were talking a little bit about Doug Forrester, who ran last, uh, last time. Uh, he, he was a party, the mainstream yeah. party mm -hmm. man, right? Yep. And, uh, and, and I, uh, I thought it was uh, important for you to come on the air and give us your position, because I think it's an interesting position. And uh, it's interesting that the Republican Party is, is actually has different tendencies, different uh, sort of uh, forces that are at play right now, and, they, and they're looking for their, uh, their footing. Oh, yeah, but uh, I actually think it's healthy. I think yes, that it brings I, yeah. up more discussion Absolutely. than if we just had great. the party line. Uh, Forrester was the party line candidate. One of the things that you keep hearing is you can't elect a conservative in New Jersey. It has to be a moderate, somebody more mainstream. Yet every time we've done these, you know, Republican light candidates, right. they lose. Right, that's correct. Yeah. <laughs> they don't win. I don't know. I don't know why they keep saying we need to put out more candidates like this. They yeah. don't win. You yeah. know, we so need we need people who are going to come up with ideas. To change the strategy. Yeah. And and the the difference between the 
the Republican-like candidates and the Democrats aren't that big. They've both historically grown the government. They've both increased debt. They've both raised taxes. You know, Steve's coming out there from a totally different philosophy. Right, we have right. to cut government. We have to cut spending. We have to make things better for the taxpayers, not for the so, people who work in government. Fantastic. So, uh, folks, Vince Ferretti, who's running for State Assembly uh, District 10, the primary is June 2nd. Steve Lonigan is uh, running against Chris Christie, the other Republican. Uh, anyone who is a Republican or an independent can vote during the primary, so we urge you to vote. Vince, I want to thank you for coming on the thank air. You. Glad to be and here. And sharing your position with us. And uh, here's a uh, t shirt from the station, the Princeton ah. TV Megathon, Thanks showing our very first president, <laughs> uh, who was a, a great uh, orator and also someone who was uh, able to uh, bring the country together in a time of uh, dire need. So thank you, everyone. <laughs> thank you.